In this video, I'll show you how to address an envelope using your Cricut machine and a white gel pen. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and you've never watched one of my videos, my name is Carly and I love all things crafting, specifically Cricut Crafts. I used to work at the Cricut headquarters and they are some of my favorite machines to use still. So if you love Cricut Crafts, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I have a ton of Cricut tutorials on my channel and I post a new tutorial every single week. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use this gel pen to address an envelope. I know a lot of people want white ink on their envelopes and since most home printers don't print with white ink, your only option is to use a white pen. So I'm going to show you how to do that using your Cricut machine. This can be an Explore machine or a Maker machine and really it could even be a Cricut Joy. You just need to make sure that you have the correct adapters. So I'm going to show you on my Maker machine but you can use the same principles with any machine. All right, let's get started. In Cricut Design Space, we are going to set up our file and I already have an example of what the end product will look like. So let's just work to get to this spot. We'll start with grabbing a shape over on the left hand side. Go ahead and click on that. And then choose a rectangle. Your rectangle will be a visual representation of your envelope. So my envelope is 7.25 inches wide by 5.25 inches tall. So you'll wanna make your rectangle as big or small as your envelope. I'm going to use a white envelope just so I can see easily. So you just click on this little color swatch and choose whatever color envelope you want. If you want a real view of what envelope color you're using, you can go down to advanced and choose a similar color to your envelope if you'd like. But since there isn't a white pen option, I'm just going to stick to white and black. Next, we need to add our text. For the fonts and text that I used, we are going to type out my name first. And my font for the script is a system font. So right here, you're going to choose system and it's called Sanatha. Sanatha. I'll link to this specific font and where I found it for the best value in my video description. So you can see that it is on my canvas, nice and big, and you can resize this to fit on your envelope, however big or small you'd like it to be. So for my font, if we look at how big my name is, I used a 26 point font, and that will be different depending on which font you use. And you can also just make it how big or small you want depending on the look you're going for. So if you wanted a really large name or a really small name, you can adjust all the sizing how you'd like it. Next, we need to type out our address. Let's move this out of the way so you can see. So I'll add another text box and type out my address, 31315. And we also want to change the font. This font I use is Morena. And I will also link this. Again, you can resize this as big or as small as you want. Just drag the handles or adjust the point size up at the top. I also added some details in between my numbers. So I did two spaces in between each number so that I could add circles in between the numbers. You don't need to do that, but if you want to just add a little bit of extra interest, you can do that. I just use the free circle and then I dropped them down to, I think 0 0.05, let's see. Yeah, that looks good. So 0 0.05 and I just eyeballed them where I wanted and then made copies. So control C on my keyboard and then control V and just dropped them in between my numbers, kind of eyeballing them. If you're doing hundreds of envelopes, this may be a little tedious, but stick around because I do have a different tutorial that will make this even easier. And then selecting all of them, to select multiple items, you just click on the circle and then hold down your shift key on your keyboard 
and that will allow you to select multiple things all at once. I just want to make sure those are all aligned vertically. So up at the top, choose align and center vertically. Sometimes I move a little quickly, so I have to catch myself and slow down so you can see what I'm doing. If you want these bigger or smaller, you can adjust the size to be as big or as small as you want. Okay, so we have everything typed out and now I want to organize it and make sure it's all aligned properly. So I want this all grouped together down here. So I'm going to select all my circles by choosing the layer that I want and then holding down the shift key, select all my circles, and then I'm going to select the address and I'm going to group those together. Just click group. And then my name and my address and the envelope, I want them all to be aligned center. So I'm going to highlight everything. So everything is selected on my layers panel and then I'm going to choose align center horizontally. So that will align it onto my envelope. Once it's aligned, you can adjust the positioning up or down wherever you'd like it. You just wanna keep in mind that there will be some vertical bars that will be added once your envelope is processed. So USPS will use this facing identification mark and you wanna make sure that you have enough space for those vertical bars after it's processed. And then you also wanna keep an area up here clear for your postage. So make sure to keep that in mind, but right about here looks good. Now with everything still selected, we need to tell the Cricut that we don't wanna cut this, but we actually want to draw it. So instead we're going to choose the operation and we're not going to choose cut, we want to draw it with a pen. So you can choose the pen and all at the same time since everything is selected, everything converted to draw. Now this is the main thing that I get questions about. I'm gonna zoom in really close so you can see. Right now you can see that your Cricut will follow the outline and essentially draw bubble letters. And the reason that it does that is because it follows the cut pattern. And if you were to cut out these letters, it just goes on the outside and the inside is just filled with the material or the cardstock or vinyl or whatever you're cutting. But since it's drawing, the inside will just be the negative space between your letters. So I know that's a little confusing. Since we're using a thin font, I'll show you here again, there isn't very much that will be seen. So it's small enough to where the outline will come together and almost look filled. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a font. The reason I wanted to mention that is because if you are drawing with a script font, you'll wanna make sure to weld your letters so you can come down to the bottom and choose Unite or Weld, whatever option you want. I would recommend using Unite because Unite, you can still edit your text. So if I need to change something, I can still adjust and change it if I need to. With Weld, you cannot make changes. So with using a font that you're going to need to change the words for different names, I would recommend using the Unite function. And you can see now that I don't have those little tails in between my letters. So hopefully that will make sense as we continue on in this tutorial. I want to tell my Cricut machine that I want this position to stay exactly where it is. So to do that, I'm going to select my envelope and my text all together and choose attach. Attach will hold those two things together on the cutting mat so that it doesn't move around. And now we're going to click make it. If you remember just one thing from this tutorial, this might be my biggest tip in this specific tutorial. We are going to move our envelope over to more of a central location. I usually do two by two because I open my envelope flop up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be roughly at the two by two and then click continue on. Since we're not actually cutting anything and we're just drawing, your material doesn't matter much. I always just choose medium cardstock since it's the first one. But you may have noticed that I chose to leave my rectangle as a basic cut. And I'll explain why I did that in just a second, but you do have a cut on your project and then you have your, your action of your draw as well. So let's load everything up and I'll show you why I did that. On your cutting mat, you'll wanna find that two by two mark and open up your envelope so the flap is open and line up the rectangular part of your envelope on that two by two mark 
all the way across. Press it down pretty well because you don't want it to lift when it goes through your machine. And I'm using a used mat, so it's not super sticky, but it's sticky enough to hold it in place. Before we move on to drawing with our Cricut machine, you'll want to move these star wheels all the way over to the right. Just push them off to the sides because you don't want those to go over your wet ink and add little marks all over your project. Then you'll want to remove your blade since we do not want to cut anything. So just remove that out of the way. And if you're not using a Cricut pen, you'll need to pop out this little adapter. To do that, I hold on to the white portion and then at the very bottom, I'm just going to push up until it pops out. So I'm just making sure to guide it and pushing it up. So I'll do that one more time. So it's pushed in right now, holding the white portion kind of stable. You're going to push it up and out until the whole thing pops out just like that. And I'll link these adapters. This specific adapter is not meant for the jelly roll pen, but it works great. I didn't buy the whole set because I am pretty frugal. So I decided to just buy the smaller set, but I'll link the set that I have. And the adapter I'm using is the SAP. Yeah, I think that's for Sharpie art pen and it works with the jelly roll pen. So I just slide that in there and then drop it into clamp A and clamp it down. So it doesn't go anywhere. And now we can load our mat into the Cricut machine. All right, I wanna give a quick explanation of this cut line that I have on the mat. When I lined up my envelope, it was so easy for me to put it at the two by two mark. And then I know that my writing is exactly where I want it to go. If you choose not to bring in that rectangle, then you just have a block of text and you kind of have to blindly position where it is. And if that works for you, that's great for me. <laughs> it is way too hard. So I like the rectangle option. And then I just take my blade out so that it doesn't actually cut anything. And the reason that works is because when the machine goes to detect the blade, even if it doesn't detect anything, it assumes it's the fine point blade. So you don't need a blade in there and it will still work perfectly fine. So let me show you how that works and we'll get started. All right, so you can see it's trying to detect the fine point blade. Even without a blade, it says, oh, okay, it's fine. And then it will start cutting and it will just follow the shape of the envelope. You could stop your machine before this part if you don't want it to do this, but it's totally fine if it does it. So now it's done and it will give you the flashing unload option. Make sure to cap your pen if you're not going to be using it again right away. And then we can unload our envelope. Before you flip it over to peel it off, you'll wanna make sure that the ink is dry so it doesn't smear. So if you have additional mats, it makes it easier because then you can let this one dry and start the next envelope. But once it's dry and you're no longer worried about smearing it, you'll flip it over and gently peel it away so that it doesn't bend your envelope. And this is what it looks like right out of the Cricut. And you can see that the top script font, it is a little bubbly. Now, the reason I didn't instruct you to fill in those letters is because with the Jelly Roll pen, when I tried to fill them in using my Cricut, it actually caused more issues with kind of smearing or scraping away the ink. So this was tight enough that it didn't bug me. And I'll show you what happens if you try to fill them in. Here's an example of where I had the Cricut fill in the letters. And I'll quickly show you a technique on how you can fill in the letters using your Cricut. But for the jelly rolls, I do not recommend that because when it went back through to fill it in, it actually scraped away the ink. And I feel like it looks worse than just doing the single pass, which takes less time and I think looks better. So that's why I didn't teach you how to do that in this tutorial. The cool thing about this tutorial is that you can use different pens with different adapters. So this is a pop-in pen and I used this yellow adapter, which is the Sharpie fine point adapter. So you can just kind of play around and see which pens fit in each adapter. I have the precision pen from American Crafts and that actually is the same exact size as a Cricut pen. So you don't need an adapter at all. 
and it fills in the letters really nicely because it's thicker. I also wanted to mention that I have a tutorial that I think works way better for addressing envelopes. This is how I address my envelopes every single Christmas and every invitation that I send out. And that's just printing your envelopes using a mail merge on Microsoft Word. So this is printed on my home printer. Here's a look at it printed with a bold font. So the same font, but just bold. So if you wanna see the side-by-side -side of those two options, I think I prefer the more handwritten look, but this is printed and then also on the craft envelope. So you can see the black ink on the brown. And you could use whatever color font you want to print that because it's a home printer. So I will add the tutorial on how to use a mail merge and print your envelopes so you can see how to do that. I said that I would show you how to fill in the fonts. I also have a full tutorial on that on my YouTube channel. I will link that here and in the video description. So if you want to see the full process on how I fill in my fonts, that tutorial is here. But I did want to show you that you can do it on Cricut as well. So let's back it up here. And I want to fill in this font since you can see that my letters, they have a little bit of the bubble effect on my script font. Not too bad on my other letters. And a way to avoid that is to make your font smaller. So if I shrunk this down, the letters would become tighter and would fill in more. So if you don't wanna fill them in, you can try some samples where you just take it down to a smaller point size and that may solve your problem. So always do tests before you draw on your envelopes. Let's say you want this size and you just wanna fill in the letters. The way that you would do that is you'd select whatever you wanna fill in and then you're going to choose offset up at the top and you're gonna type in negative 0.005. And you can see that that will add a new stroke inside your letters. Click apply. And you wanna make sure that your offset is drawing too. If you have a really thick font and you need to do this multiple times, you can click on this again, choose offset and do the exact same thing, 0 0.005, and you can see that it's offsetting a little bit more, and click apply. So say you do that as many times as you want. Once you're happy with everything, you'll just wanna make sure that you select everything and attach those back together so that it knows to do that all at the same time. And then you can use your pens and it will fill in essentially with your pens. For this pop-in pen, I did that exact process, and since this is a really thin pen, it filled in the letters really nicely, so you can see how effective that is. I know I'm throwing a lot at you in this tutorial and linking you to a lot of other videos to check out, but if you are confused on filling in fonts, I do have a full tutorial on that using Silhouette Studio since I feel like Silhouette Studio is a little bit easier. And then a full tutorial on how to print envelopes using a mail merge, which is my favorite technique. The only downside is that you cannot use white ink since most home printers don't use white ink. So if you want to add white writing to a colored envelope, the Jelly Roll is the way to go. I like the Jelly Roll 10, but they do have thinner options. This is the thickest, so I feel like it's the easiest to fill it in and you don't have to go back and worry about filling it in and then scraping away the ink. So Jelly Roll 10, I'll link the exact pens in my video description so you can grab those as well as the adapters. And if you have questions on how to mail merge and print envelopes using your home printer, I will link that full tutorial in the video description as well as filling in fonts using Silhouette Studio since I just feel like Silhouette Studio makes it a little bit easier. So I'll link that video as well. Okay, I think that's everything. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions at all, leave those in the video comments because I always answer comments on my YouTube videos first. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.